Hey guys, it's Gibby Man again. Um, this is podcast number two, and today we're going to be talking about Neo, um, extending the conversation. Obviously, you can see that I'm pretty passionate about the platform, um, about the ecosystem, about the blockchain technology. Um, I just want to firstly put in a disclaimer um, this is not professional advice, this is not financial advice of any kind, it's just my personal opinion. Um, and also a plug for Cryptocurrencies Australia for Bo because uh, he's the one person I found in Australia who really I feel uh, is delving deep enough in their crypto space to really dig out some really difficult information or more to the point find information that is not necessarily easy to find um, and really quite vital or quite, quite important to understand or have a more holistic understanding of uh, cryptocurrencies like NEO. Often um, the CEOs and uh, associates of these blockchains get quiet, particularly um, when times get tough like right now with um, a lot of FUD in the market. So um, yeah, I want to just plug Bo again because he's also been able to locate information that I didn't know. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, recently I, I learned that there's a patent for a central platform um, that NEO has made and that is something that I would encourage all people to look at. If you have investments in NEO, obviously it's of interest to you. But the reason why patent is so key is that it looks like um, it is a patent in which uh, other other blockchains will be will have to utilize. So if NEO has that key patent in the, a country like China, which has a huge market of crypto, cryptocurrencies, then that is something that is worth knowing because there are obviously going to be other future block blockchains um, that, are, that assert themselves in the, the Chinese space and obviously in the Asian uh, markets as well and even worldwide. So for any, any government-supported blockchain to have a patent that's going to be endorsed by that government is worth knowing about. So it adds to the weight and validity of this, this really comprehensive, robust uh, blockchain that is NEO. So uh, I want to talk also about something that Tyler uh, Swope um, touched on and it's something you can read about in the NEO website itself, but it's called the NEO Roadmap. And what it does is it, it provides three key areas um, of focus in that roadmap. So I'll just touch on them briefly. The first one is decentralization of consensus nodes. And today I was listening to um, some information on the Dash conference. And even though I you know, don't want to get off on a tangent, there's a lot of consistencies between the way in which Dash are now moving and the way in which NEO already has structured itself. And that is that they have a lot of fundamentals about node structure and it's worth looking into that. Um, universal data is the second point. It's a format for the wallet so you're going to see a lot of changes come forth and if you go onto their website you'll see specifics um, provided for each of these three areas. And The last one is really important um, and that is the promotional aspect in the ecosystem um, uh, component and Bo provided really interesting information about the Nest Fund that is a part of that NEO roadmap and certainly if you want to go into some of those key points go and delve into that but essentially what uh, is worth knowing is that NEO has a very very succinct roadmap they have a lot of detail in theirs and it's very clear that from the from the outset of the studies, um, you know anyone would go and do on Neo if they delve deep enough. They really do um, have a clear understanding of not where they are today, but where they are next year. You know they have clear projections and they're actually doing a lot of the uh, groundwork to um, you know instill confidence in the consumer and in the investor like me. Now, moving on, I want to just touch on, I think Tyler Swope was talking about something I'd looked at before, I'd seen his video, was, it's called Loop Ring. Loop Ring is so important, it's currently being traded on a, in a few markets at the moment. Um, I only have a few notes here that I made for this uh, podcast, but basically Loop Ring is, a, is really worth knowing about because it's essentially a decentralized exchange. Um, many of you would know about Kyber. Kyber um, is highly endorsed by Vitalik. I think Vitalik is also an advisor, but I read today in a tweet he's going to relinquish his um, you know, allocation of tokens um, in forms of charity, I think in response to Charlie 
uh, sorry, not Charlie Lee. Charlie Lee was cool in what he tweeted today about it too. But in response to Raiden's Raiden rather um, decision to go for an ICO, Vitalik I don't think is a fan of that. So he's responded and very altruistically he's put up his um, share of the or allocation of tokens for both uh, Kaiba and Omise Go. So that's a pretty generous thing. Um, but yeah, there's a definite link in. Uh, functionality between loop ring and kyber to some extent but loop ring has some really key points that are worth knowing first of all um, this is massive da hong fei is an advisor to loop ring now if a lot of people are a fan of vitalik buterin or if they're a fan of you know satoshi aka question mark you know whatever then you're going to be a massive fan of this because Anybody who knows anything about uh, the Chinese space when it comes to crypt cryptocurrencies, they're going to know the name Da Hongfei, the CEO of NEO and OnChain. So when you have an advisor like that, there's a reason for that. Um, currently, half the supply of Loop Ring is, is available, um, and there's a total supply of 1.3 billion. And 25% of that um, percent of that is going to be released over the next four years. So it's really worth knowing that um, this is an active market. It can be. It's it's currently traded on a few different markets. It's certainly not in Australia. Um, well, it's not in CoinSpot, uh, which is the exchange that I use. Um, but yeah, if you can find uh, Loopring, certainly study it. It doesn't look like a very, you know, promising um, uh, investment when you look at the analysis. If you do it. Um, uh, detailed analysis of it, but it's just something to, that is, is really worth researching to get a better understanding of its purpose, its um, its position today, and perhaps, you know, its projections. Okay, uh, another thing I want to talk about was KYC. Um, unlike Icon, if you don't know anything about Icon, I can understand it was really hard to find anything on that, but that was recently done in a pre-sale, which I took part of which I really never do, but this one really ticked a lot of boxes for me. Um, there was a KYC done in Icon, which is um, Know Your Customer. And recently in an interview I was watching um, in China, I wasn't there, but I was watching it, um, Da Hongfei was asked about KYC. Um, and his response was that it's not necessary, um, but it's, or rather it's not compulsory, but you could opt for it, which I really liked, um, because there's no question that um, with the crackdown and with the ICO scare in China, um, there's a lot of people who are worried about security and it's important for you to know that NEO definitely does provide this option um, and I imagine it will get better with their identity focus um, as part of one of their three components um, in the future. Yeah, uh, the other thing is there's also um, some multiple uh, trade pairing that's going to be happening or is happening already. So that's something that's really cool and the exchanges um, in different parts of the world, Bitfinex I think is one that is doing that. So keep um, yeah, keep an eye out for that as well. And just uh, to add to that, just in case anyone wasn't quite sure on what Loopring is, well basically it's just a protocol, um, it's, it's also a currency, um, it's uh, abbreviations LRC and it's, as I said before, it's a decentralized exchange that trades across the crypto token exchanges. Um, it's, it's essentially rising, I'm just reading this a little bit here, it's essentially rising the liquidity of cryptocurrencies and currently they're building a financial system for the future. Uh, so uh, again, the fact that Da Hong Fei is connected to it is absolutely worth looking look uh, looking into. And if you want to find out more, I found a great article um, at a site uh, on Medium. And it's called Decentralized Today. Um, I might be able to throw a link into um, the YouTube that I post for this podcast. But um, yeah, and I'll, I'll even throw in a little bit of other informo information on Loopring with links if I can. Um, but it is worth noting that it is trading currently at zero point. 06 uh, on the Australian market, um, sorry, no, on the international market, it's by the US. Um, and, you know, that might seem very small, but um, from little things, big things grow. Um, there are a few anomalies I've noticed in the, um, in the charts, but overall, you know, it's very, you know, very stable and it has been for some time. 
Um, but as I said, with it, with the role that it plays, um, it's something to work to just to take to heed, to take note of, and um, yeah, make your own decisions on that one. Okay, um, I wanted to talk about um, this question. I want to touch on this idea of Ethereum, and you know, there's a lot of uh, hype about Neo being the Ethereum of China, and I just wanted to go into that in a little bit of detail and discuss that question. Don't really have the answer, but from my opinion and having understand, you know, I've only been researching for a few weeks in the whole space. So I really don't know anything, and um, certainly correct me and and smack me over the head if I <laughs> say anything wrong. And obviously, your feedback is very much appreciated. But um, just in terms of the function, that the way in which Neo works, there's a lot of um, I think uh, not just hype, but just misunderstandings when it comes to broad statements about what NEO actually is. Really at its core it is so much more than you know uh, a copycat of Ethereum. In, in fact as Da Hongfei himself has said a few times um, it is simply just not like Ethereum. It is different in many ways. Obviously the cultural component as I've mentioned in my previous podcast that is a really serious factor to understand because the cultural climate is one of a centralized um, uh, hegemonic, you know, position, you know, it's hierarchical. There's lots of, you know, historical, you know, uh, facts that, you know, support uh, a very distinct um, cli- uh, social, socio-political, you know, uh, socio-cultural environment that, uh, you know, as opposed to what Ethereum, you know, that of Vitalik and his experiences. He's coming from a, you know, uh, a Russo-Canadian background, it's, you know, He's very idealistic. He's all about democracy and you know breaking the, the you know the political barriers down. What uh, Da Hongfei is all about is not necessarily anything against that, but he's trying to do that within the confines and constraints of the government itself. So he's all about building within, build uh, and being supported by, rather than you know being a heretic and telling the government basically stuff you. We're going to go decentralize everything. I don't think Vitalik's doing that, but there is, you know, there's sentiment in his, in many of, through many of his supporters of this ideal. And Ethereum speaks for itself. It's a very functional, very real world uh, uh, technology. And I absolutely love it. I have, I hold Ethereum um, in my portfolio, but it's just important to understand the, the, you know, the vernacular and, and, the semantics that each of, and also just the cultural weight of each of these uh, currencies. So, in terms of NEO, uh, let's just talk about this briefly for a second. Um, there's some interesting things happening with the CEO, uh, the Cosmos, I think it's called, or um, there's some really cool deals going on, um, and that was also part of the things I was talking about before with um, some of the things that Neo are currently working on in their roadmap. But this particular one with the COZ, it's all about, you know, encouraging um, growth of the network, of the ecosystem. They're really big on that and they pay for that as well through um, coin offerings, through enticements, through, um, you know, support for essentially the growth of the ecosystem. So that's becoming, you know, a bigger thing, hackathons, another strategy, but I just really like the way that Neo overtly values um, the uh, key, I guess, groups within the ecosystem, and they reward them for their efforts in trying to improve the tech. Recently, for example, they held this really cool, I think it was like a hackathon or something, but it was to do with the wallet. They were trying to improve some of the tech of the wallet, and you know, within 18 days, this one particular guy had you know, worked super hard and found um, a, res- a, a, a resolved matter that they were trying to work on. So they support them and they reward them accordingly. And I really like, you know, I like knowing that I'm a part of a team that does that. When recently, um, also in a recent interview, Neo, uh, sorry, Da Hong Fei was asked, you know, what about the um, the tokens that the Neo Council hold, and, and you know, what would they do with that in a situation where they perhaps could use use them to affect the market? And I liked Da Hongfei's response. He said that he will not interfere with the token market, and um, I, you know, that's important because 
not only is, does the Neo Council have a significant power, which again relates to, importantly relates to the cultural paradigm that is China, but through this centralised control aspect or pseudo control of, with the Neo Council, there is a genuine um, element of power there. And just having had a small amount of time watching and observing Da, I like that it's him. I like that he's able to be a CEO and lead this because he clearly has a very vested interest in the company. Obviously, he has you know, his own um, you know stake in it, but he's very big on the growth of the ecosystem, and that's something that um, eases my mind uh, as you know I embark in investing in the early myself. Um, on chain, also, I absolutely love the symbiotic relationship between DNA and Neo that I talked about briefly. I love the connections between on chain and Neo, despite that they are distinct entities uh, in business. Um, as Tyler um, Swope and Neo himself was saying, uh, sorry, Da Hong Fei was saying, there is something coming up, and I want to learn a lot more about it. And I would encourage you to do the same. And if you can find out, awesome, I'd love to know. But there was mention of Neo X. And basically, that's something that's going to synergize the two entities. It's going to make, make Neo much more valuable. Um, and essentially, if you can imagine, if on, on, on chain and DNA are the you know the corporate aspect where they're just trying to you know evolve um, or, or even expedite blockchain development in China and abroad, then you can only imagine what it would mean when those those two entities of Neo and on chain. Uh, interconnect that's going to be another you know perhaps bull run um, of a significant kind I irrespective I, I to be honest I'm not about trying to watch the market every second I'm not in it for the trade um, because Neo is not one to muck around with in the in the short term and not to do shorts on because uh, it is something that is revolutionary in terms of its tech and there are some other blockchains playing catch up with that um, but certainly it's just an incredibly uh, complex, but yet uh, almost, you know, for want of a better word, uh, a beautiful blockchain technology. Uh, guys, the next thing I wanted to talk about was consensus nodes um, in relation to NEO. Now, I'm certainly not going to profess to know much about this other than it is my understanding that currently there's a... Um, there's a degree of gas that needs to be paid, um, uh, which will apparently, it's going to gradually diminish um, throughout 2018, so that that's not going to be a requisite for um, you know, the, the nodes issue, for nodes consensus. Um, basically, the gist of it I understand is that uh, that's advantageous for anyone who wants to go and invest in NEO, regardless of the amount they have, um, and it's going to provide better access to the overall network and ecosystem. So that's good, something good, um, and there'll be a, essentially, as Da Hongfeng said himself, there'll be a third less of the consensus nodes um, within the you know mid-2018. So that's just something to know and to investigate more, because I need to do the same. Um, in terms of uh, deployments on Neo, Neo's platform um, of small contracts, they are currently free, and what's really cool is that the gas that's designed through that dual um, governance and utility, utility token system that sort of that offsets the issue of costing because the gas that's generated it actually provides the um, alt the al the alternative to uh, other systems like Bitcoin and, and the mining that they have to do in order to supplement the the transaction fees and that sort of thing. So that's a really cool thing, and it's another reason why Neo is such a um, such a, a smart blockchain um, and, and protocol. Um, the other thing I thought it was worth mentioning is that um, if anyone wants to try and understand the ICO Red Pulse, um, I heard or read something recently in on Steemit, I think it was, um, and there was someone who likened Red Pulse to Bloomberg, a decentralized Bloomberg. So that I thought that was a really cool analogy because I mean, obviously Bloomberg is a major player um, of um, information research and uh, Da Hongfei was even going one step further and he was likening um, Red Pulse to Steemit in terms of upvoting and that sort of thing so that is also very exciting because 
um, it's very likely that the cap's going to be a little different to the steam design. And as you know, Dan Larimer, big big fan of him as well. Um, the use case uh, and application of Steemit is real. It's happening right now. Um, I know Bo uses it. I know a lot of people use it. I'm going to try and investigate it once I finally get a Steemit account. And it just takes a while, but <laughs> I'll get there. But essentially, you know, what uh, what, what I'm leading to by talking about Red Pulse is that Da Hongfei said recently that he he just simply wants to have real real use cases attached to the core. Um, framework that is Neo, so he doesn't want any rubbish. Um, so that means they're going to vet a lot of crap. Um, um, they're not going to waste time with um, things that can't grow in the ecosystem efficiently. So if you're looking for ICOs, firstly, not not that you can, because you can't invest necessarily in the future as easily as you know you can in the US or in the West. But what you can be assured of is for, for at this point is that if you're going to buy Neo. The, all the IC, all the businesses that are attached to that through the private sector, which is how they're going to generate their income um, to help to, to bolster that, you can be assured that they're getting the best quality they can find because the Neo Council aren't really settling for less than um, you know the best of what is submitted. So that's a really cool thing to know. Okay. So then, uh, interestingly, recently, and I know many of you may have heard this, Da uh, was asked um, about whether or not China will be the first in, you know, first form to present or to evidence mainstream adoption, the first blockchain. Um, and his response was he thought that the U.S. or China, and then he led to China being the answer. I wanted to just put in another way of thinking, and that is perhaps to also throw in the country South Korea. And the reason is, and uh, normally, you know. Normally, I probably wouldn't say this if we didn't have, see so much evidence of it, but South Korea, in my opinion, has modelled, or perhaps they've done it on their own, but it doesn't appear to be their case. South Korea have modelled their approach to the blockchain industry on the approach that NEO has used. Perhaps, again, you know, it's going back to that cultural frame, but both of them have backmapped from the corporate world. And that is fantastic in terms of investment. It's it's fantastic for, you know, um, for real world application. Because at the end of the day, if you can't use it in the space, if you can't use it in the the private sectors and the you know, then in the, in the immediate future, then really it's just a presentation of an idea and. South Korea, I would argue, are in that mix as well, uh, perhaps further ahead than the US. We know about a few other blockchains that are evolving, um, had huge ICOs like the Tezo, but again, haven't heard enough to really understand how the US is number two in DAR's response. I'm going to add in South Korea there. Um, yeah, uh, there's so much to be said about them, uh, about the team, about the council, about DAR. Um, at the end of the day, we have to just always remember that throughout the process of the ICO scare, Da and his team uh, and even other government sources were constantly stating, if you looked through the FUD, um, it became pretty clear that they were many of them were trying to present the argument that, no, it's not, a, not as serious as what it's being presented in the media. Um, in fact, there's every intention to work together, to collaborate, to get this thing going. We just need to make sure that we are doing it the right way. And to be honest, as an Australian, um, and with a lot of things happening in Australia right now, in, in that same light, I would be happy as an Australian citizen if I saw what was happening in China because not only is it leading the way for regulation, which is fundamental for the growth of the industry itself, but there's a lot of security for the investor too because currently there just seems to be an infinite amount of ICOs established on the Ethereum network because it's not vetted properly and it's to the dismay of people like Vitalik. Um, so again, it's a bit like, I'll, I'll, be, I'll just be really direct, um, it's a bit like the bubble, you know, of the 80s with the, you know, the dot-com issue, the era in that if you have so many ICOs establishing themselves and then on top of that um, you know you have the evolution of the entire network then much like the subprime you know collapse if a lot of the, the quality isn't there then that's going to stress the entire market 
So what China's trying to do is alleviate that issue right from the outset and, and learn from the mistakes of things like the dot-com bubble. So it's not a bad thing. It's actually a really productive and really um, prudent approach to the blockchain um, ecosystem that could well e evolve through things like Kyber, not, not so much Kyber, but more things like um, intermediaries like um, uh, like Loopring and, that's, and other um, tokens and, or companies by interlinking all the different ecosystems of countries, which will happen, um, and a few major players are going to evolve, we're going to have a, a worldwide network um, that will be the internet of money <laughs> and, and so much more. Through the, it'll be the internet of, uh, you know, interactive, decentralized sort of or pseudo decentralized business, and I have no doubt in my mind that Neo is going to be part of that very key network. So you know, I could go on and, and you know bore you all to death, but I just wanted to wrap up and say that Neo is worth. Um, really taking seriously if you haven't already invested in it have a look and see what you think it's not my advice for you to go and do it but I'm only speaking from my own experience I haven't been in this scene for very much very much time in fact it's only a few weeks now but um, it's been enough for me to jump on board and buy some NEO pretty rapidly um, simply because I respect the tech I respect the people behind it and I think that it the, the tech itself is quite revolutionary in our day and um, our time. So that's it from me, uh, Skippy Man. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast and I'll try and present some other ideas soon. Thank you very much.